Ink Ribbon. Guess how many PS1 games there are. Yep, you guessed right. 4,105. Although, that number is debated, so take that with a grain of salt. But anyway, it's no surprise that some of them would be missed or overlooked with that many titles. So today, I thought we'd do something a little different. I was going through my PS1 games and realized I like a lot of games that most people I talk to have never heard of. So I decided to make a video entirely dedicated to PS1 hidden gems, or at least games that I really recommend based on my own experience. So with that, and in no particular order, here are 10 PS1 hidden gems that I recommend. Number 10. Bloody Roar 2. To kick off this list is Bloody Roar 2, a game that I first tried on one of those PS1 demo discs, and it's so much fun. If you're a fan of fighting games and you've never heard of this, then you are in for a treat. Bloody Roar is a fighting game with solid controls, cool characters, and nice visuals, but the biggest thing this game has to offer is its beast drive mechanic. Throughout the match, a meter will fill up, and once it's full, your character will transform into an animal form, and suddenly gain a massive amount of strength and speed. And the characters and creature designs are really, really cool. Characters can transform into a rabbit, a tiger, a chameleon, a mole, and more. Uh, this game has continued with about three more games, I think, but it hasn't really been seen since, though it's still worth checking out the second entry. Number 9 Die Hard Trilogy as any gamer will tell you, games based on movies usually aren't great, and games that are bundled together are also usually not great, but somehow, against all odds, three games based on the first three Die Hard movies all bundled onto one disc is actually... pretty fun. Each game is a different kind of genre and plays differently. You got Die Hard, which is a third-person game and every level is a higher floor of Nakatomi Plaza. Then you've got Die Hard 2, where you play an on-rails shooter game similar to like Area 51 or any of those games, since those were hugely popular at the time. And last, you've got Die Hard with a Vengeance, which plays kind of like Crazy Taxi, but instead of picking up customers, you're picking up bombs. You can also run over people. It's, it's actually really chaotic, but it's fun. Oh, and also if you fail, all of New York gets vaporized, so highly recommend. Number 8. Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. Now, okay, I'm gonna level with you on this one. I haven't really fully played this one yet, but let me explain. I always knew that the original Alone in the Dark walked so that Resident Evil could run, and because of the way it looked, I just never played it. But when I saw this for PlayStation, I just assumed it was some kind of re-release or port of the original game. But then I tried it, and after about 10 minutes of playing, I put the controller down and stopped immediately because I was like, oh my god, this is so cool, I need to tell my viewers. The, the lighting from the flashlight, the story, the presentation, it all feels like that classic Resident Evil fuzzy warm feeling that we love. And if the PS1 graphics are a little too low poly for you, this game was also re-released with updated visuals for the PS2. So this is me telling you that this is a good game, and I look forward to streaming it, eventually. Number 7 Fighting Force Originally intended to be a 3D Streets of Rage, Fighting Force is a fantastic beat-em-up that's dripping with the 90s aesthetic. I found out about this game because it was made by Eidos, who also made Tomb Raider and the Legacy of Kane series. You can play as one of four characters, each with their own pros and cons, and you can also play couch co-op with a second player. One thing that really stands out are the levels. Not only are they really well done and varied, but pretty much everything can be destroyed or used as a weapon, making combat varied and satisfying. It doesn't have the best controls and has essentially no story of any kind, but it's still one of my favorite beat-em-ups and really worth a try if you like those kinds of games. Number 6 Galarians Okay, this is for the Resident Evil fans once again, but I actually did play a lot of this one, and I can say it's honestly great. I always thought this was a bad game the way people talked about it, but I genuinely enjoyed it. It really scratches that classic fixed camera itch, but instead of guns, you fight using psychic abilities. It doesn't have the same polish as games it competed with, 
but it's still good enough that it can stand on its own. It also has an interesting premise because instead of fighting against experiments or monsters, you instead play as the experiment and have to fight scientists and soldiers to escape. Also one weird thing I discovered while researching this game is that it has a lot of obscure media tied to it, including two light novels, a PS2 sequel, and even a full CG movie that is available on YouTube and it's made using the same graphics used in the game's cutscenes, making it very special and unique because it's essentially a PS1 cinematic full-length movie. Number 5 Vigilante 8 So if you were a gamer in the 90s, you probably knew about Twisted Metal, the king of vehicular combat. It dominated the genre and had a lot of copycats, but out of all of them, Vigilante 8 is the one that, in my opinion, not only copied it, but improved it. I know that it's a bit blasphemous to say that, but I actually replayed both Twisted Metal 3 and Vigilante 8 recently, and while they have drastically different vibes and aesthetics, I have to say that gameplay-wise, Vigilante 8 was a lot more fun. Twisted Metal has this really rugged, angry, cool aesthetic going for it with a high degree of difficulty, and I feel a lot better about struggling with it as a kid because it's still difficult even as an adult. As for Vigilante 8, it's completely overflowing with 70s charm and some really cool characters, but I have to say it's a lot less chaotic, and it allows you to really enjoy the game a lot more because it's not so difficult. If you liked Twisted Metal and you've never played this one, I highly recommend you try it. And it's worth mentioning that it also has a sequel. Number 4 Fear Effect Because it came out towards the end of the PS1's lifespan, this game kind of fell by the wayside, especially since the highly anticipated PS2 was about to release but Fear Effect is an amazing game that is so worth playing. The best way I can describe it is Resident Evil and Ghost in the Shell had a baby. Though it suffers from weird menus and a lot of trial and error gameplay, the story and the graphics are amazing and totally worth playing. There's a lot of environmental puzzles where you have to figure out how to progress, and this can be anything from avoiding traps to taking out enemies, but if you do them wrong, it's instant death. Taking place during the year 2050, in a futuristic Hong Kong, you play as a group of characters led mainly by Hannah and deal with everything from mob leaders to occult rituals. If you enjoy games like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Metal Gear Solid, then I guarantee you're probably going to like this game. Number 3 Jersey Devil Jersey Devil is a 3D platformer plain and simple. If you liked Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, or any other mascot platformer, you'll love Jersey Devil. It's a fantastic game that for whatever reason just didn't get the attention it deserved. You play as the Jersey Devil, which I found out is based on a real life urban legend, and he's a pretty cool little character with some good moves. Solid level design, 90s cartoon cutscenes, it's honestly a good time. Unfortunately, I think around this time people were starting to feel platformer fatigue, so it's most likely what led to it not performing well, but if you're into 3D platformers, I can really recommend this one if you haven't tried it. It's fun. Especially if you're into like Halloween aesthetics, because this game is essentially Halloween themed almost. Number 2 Police Knots If you're a fan of Metal Gear Solid, then this one is definitely for you. Police Knots was originally a Japanese exclusive, but thanks to a fan translation, we are now able to play it in English, and the game is fantastic. Being a Kojima game, it still retains his trademark storytelling, and even features Meryl Silverberg as a character, though she's in a different universe. It's hard to talk about this too much without spoiling anything, but basically, you play as a detective who is training for a space mission, but due to an accident is sent drifting into space while being cryogenically frozen. He was presumed dead, but he was found and returned 25 years later, in the year 2040. The interesting thing is he looks exactly the same, while everyone else has aged, including his wife, who has remarried since she presumed he was dead. And all of that happens in the first few minutes of the game. It's got elements of visual novels, point-and-click adventure games, and even some shooting sections. Highly recommended. Number 1 Mizerna Falls. 
To end this list is yet another Japanese exclusive game that we can now play thanks to a fan translation. This game is really unique and very special, being one of the first open world games ever made. The game takes place in a fictional town in Colorado. After a high school girl is attacked by a bear and then another goes missing, you must search for clues and find out what is going on, playing as a high school student. You have seven days to solve the mystery and you can get different endings based on what you do. I'd honestly recommend playing with a guide if you can though because in typical 90s fashion this game does not do a lot to help you or tell you what to do next. I found myself having to restart after getting lost and running out of gas in my little beetle car and just generally not knowing where to go. Going around the town, not only can you talk to people, but you can go into several buildings and everyone has a schedule of where they will be at different times on different days. You also have to sleep and eat and it's just full of that PS1 aesthetic and it's very impressive on a technical level. If you've ever played Deadly Premonition, you know more or less what to expect as this game is also heavily inspired by the show Twin Peaks. And there you have it, 10 PS1 hidden gems that I personally recommend. I'd love to know if you have played any of these and if there's a game that caught your eye then please hit that like button. If you know of any other hidden gems on PlayStation or any other systems that people should check out, please leave them down in the comments so we can all share it with each other. Remember to drink water, and until next time, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.